we're going to talk about and you're going to receive impartation of the light of Jesus Christ. Okay. This message is not new age. It's not witchcraft. Okay. God is light and there is no darkness in him. When God spoke, the first thing he created was light. Let there be light. Why? Because when he opened his mouth, out came who he is. God is light, and there is no darkness in him. Jesus is called the light of the world. Okay. And his light brings life. When he said, I am the light of the world, and whoever believes in me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light which is life. Say, the light is life. You have to understand something. Jesus is not a light being. He's not the light of the world so that he can look sparkly or glittery or whatever -y. He's the light of the world because his light is a power. It's a very part of his nature. It's a characteristic of who he is. And everything about him releases healing, deliverance, fullness, miracles to us. And it's the same with his light. His light brings life. Life to your soul, life to your body, life to your family, life to your marriage, life to every part of you. Because his light drives out all darkness. Darkness of trauma, darkness of grief, darkness of depression, anxiety, fear, demonic oppression, sickness, disorder, issues in your marriage, Dark areas in your thinking, dark areas in your ministry or your business, when the light hits it, darkness is dispelled. Hebrews 1 3. We're going to put it up on the board so that you believe me because it's almost too wild. Hebrews 1 3 in the Amplified Classic, Hunter, if you are back there, <clears throat> I'll read it while he puts it up. It says, he, meaning Jesus, is a sole expression of the glory of God, the light being. The outraying or radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Look, Jesus is a light being. Guess where that light being lives? In here. If you could see inside your spirit, it's light, blazing, radiating, glorious light. Because it's Christ. And he is the light being. And you notice it says that he's the outraying or radiance of the divine. That means he's inside of you, the light being, but he's outraying from inside your spirit, man. He's outraying. What does he accomplish by outraying his radiance into your life? Well, he's the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature. How many of you know that light carries information? Fiber optic cables, fiber optic cables are made of laser light. And they carry data, information from one point to another through the lasers in the fiber optic cables. Jesus' light, as it outrays from your inner man, carries the information of what? Of God's perfect imprint and his very nature. The light of Christ in you. Outray imprints God's nature on your mind so you think like him, on your will 
So you make decisions led by him on your emotions so that you feel the feelings, the desires of God and Christ. As the light being Jesus lives in you and he outrays from inside your spirit man, he puts a perfect imprint in God's very image on your physical body. Disease is not the imprint of God. Disorder, pain, inflammation is not the imprint or nature or characteristic of God. So when the light of Christ outrays from your inner man, it imprints on your cells, on your bones, on your organs, on your skin, on your face, on your hair, on your eyes, on your ears, on every part of you. It imprints God's character, God's nature, God's perfect image. And there's no sickness or disorder in God. So the darkness of all those things has to be dispelled. Put your hand on your belly and say, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He's a light being and he lives right here. And he's outraying, outraying God's character his nature, his perfect imprint on my mind, my will, my emotions, my physical body, and then out me into my life, my family, my marriage, my children, my ministry, my business, my schooling, and every part of my life, dispelling darkness dispelling all darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know how they print photographs on photographic paper? They take a negative. They take a negative. Send light through the negative and it puts a positive image on photographic paper. Any negative, any negative you're dealing with, you send light through it. You send his light, the light of Christ, the Christ, the light being through that negative. Think of a negative right now in your life. Pick, 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 make a list right now. Let it stir up in your heart. What is those negatives? Now, put those negatives in your mind and say this with me. The light being, Jesus Christ, lives in me, and I decree his light is outraying through every negative on my list and turning it into a positive. Burning a positive image on every part of me where there was a negative image. Now, think of all those negatives and in your mind, start sending light through it. From here, from here, this is where it's coming from. From here, go ahead, come on. Right now, you can even say those things out loud. To say, I'm sending light through you to destroy you. I'm sending light to you, through you to make you from negative to positive. Come on, turn that negative into a positive image. The positive image, an image of God. To say, I'm turning that negative into the image of God via Christ's light. Whatever it is, sickness, disease, family members. Say, I'm burning God's image on that right now via the light of Christ. 
outrage from my inner man. Thank you, Lord. We don't understand something. The light of Christ produces fruit in us. It's the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 9. We're going to look at it. For the fruit, the effect, the product of the light or the spirit consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. Notice, first of all, that light there is capital L. Jesus Christ, light of the world. And then notice how it compares the light with the spirit. The light or the spirit. The light or the spirit. You know why? Because they're interchangeable. Because the light is the spirit. Because the spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the spirit of Christ. And Christ is the light of the world. So the spirit of Christ lives in you right now. Christ is the light of the world. So that means that you're full of light, the light being. And guess what? The light of Christ or the Spirit produces fruit. It's not just to make it sparkly or glittery, but it actually causes fruit to manifest in your life. It causes a fruit or an effect or a product. What kind? Here's just a couple of examples. Kindly goodness, a brightness of heart, trueness of life. Look, I, my whole life I was never kindly or good. I didn't want to be. I was wicked and evil. And probably most of you don't even know what that's like, but we all have wickedness in us. But the light produces fruit. When you meditate, sit, and meditate on the truth of who lives in you, the light being, all the time, he... he he never dims. He never leaves. The light being is always blazing inside of you, ready for you to release him with your focus, with your attention, with your decrees, with your beholding him. And then he'll produce fruit, and you'll see those areas where you were not kindly and good shift. You'll see everything where, where, where you were fighting to be upright in heart, maybe you've allowed yourself to get bitter or angry or upset or depressed or anxious. But when you release the light, it will produce the fruit of the uprightness of heart. And it'll cause you to have trueness of life. What does that mean? Trueness of life is no disease, no pain, no disorder, no lack, no poverty, no strife, no division. Say it with me. Put your hand on your belly and say, for the fruit, the effect or the product of the light or the spirit consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. Say, Lord, I believe as I focus on you living in me, the light being that you outray these fruits into my life, I receive everything those fruits describe and more because of your light in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Why am I having you repeat stuff after me? I'll tell you why. Because the word voice in the New Testament is the Greek word phaino, and it means this, ready? to bring forth into the light, to cause to shine, shed light, to shine, to be bright, to be resplendent, to be brought forth into the light. What does that mean? Your voice is the gateway to let him out. When you speak his light, he's outraying. It comes up and out your voice. And it travels to wherever you need it. That's why the Bible says in Job 22, thou shalt decree a thing and it will be established 
and the light will shine upon your ways. Everybody always says that, that Job scripture, in fact, you can put it up there, Hunter, Job 22, 28. They always say, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established, but they never finish it. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Why? Because the light shines upon your ways. When you speak a decree, light comes out of your inner man where the light being Jesus Christ lives and it flies out of your mouth at 186,000 miles per second and it goes right to that thing that you're decreeing over. Your soul, your body, somebody else you're praying for, lack of your finances, whatever, and it drives out the darkness that's hindering the breakthrough. That's why your decrees are established because the light of Christ shines upon thy ways. As you speak your decrees. I can't tell you how many people, people that if I said their names, you'd know them, have contacted me and said, I, I'm sick, I need help, can you please help me? And they'll be in another country, and I'll stand right in my living room and decrease light scriptures over them. And they get healed. Why? Because light travels, scientific fact, 186,000 miles per second. So as soon as you start to say those scriptures, it's already there producing fruit. How do you think words of knowledge work? You get a word of knowledge because the light hits your brain and your spirit, and you pick up that word of knowledge. I'll prove that to you in a minute. And you speak it over somebody in the audience, when you do, the light comes out of you, goes right to them, drives out the darkness of that sickness, that disorder, that problem, that issue. It's true. It's true. Put your hand on your belly. Say, my voice is the gateway to let the light out. When I decree things, they are established because the light shines upon my ways. Lord God, right now, I send the light of Christ hurtling across space and time to wherever I need it. Now think about where you need it. Is it your kids? Is it your marriage? Is it just on your body or your soul? Is it somebody else's body? Is it somebody who needs salvation? There's a lot of scriptures about the light bringing people into salvation. Speak the light of Christ to them right now. Go. Speak the light of Christ. Send it with your voice. Speak their name. Say the light being is coming. I release the light being. I release the light being right now. And I will see fruit. Fruit, an effect, and a product from the light. Yes, send them light. Send that thing light so your decree will be established. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> The reason why we're decreeing all these scriptures is because the Bible says that the word is full of light. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When you read the word, when you decree the word, light. Because Jesus is the word. And he's the light of the world. So as we decree these things, as we decree these scriptures, light is being released to wherever you need it. Amen? And as you're praying, lay hands on yourself. That's why I said, you know, lay hands on your stomach. You know, lay hands on your head. Lay hands on anywhere you're sick. You know why? Because the Bible says this, put it up, Hunter, Job 36, 32. 
that God covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike the mark. You're created in God's image. You're created in God's image. Your hands are covered with lightning. And when you speak, when you command, your voice releases light. That light strikes the mark. That's why you, when you lay hands on people, you're releasing an anointing. The light, remember, the light of the Spirit, the light of the Spirit, it said, produces fruit. The Holy Spirit is light. The anointing is inside of you. When you lay hands on them, lightning is released. You lay hands on yourself. You lay hands on people next to you. You lay hands on your kids, your husband, whoever it is. The lightning will strike its mark as you speak the command. Lay hands on yourself right now. Where do you need it? Lay hands on where you need it. Lay one hand on where you need it. Lay the other hand on your friend next to you. Where do they need it? <laughs> it's like, what do you call that, twister? I'll say, Lord, I'm created in your image, so my hands are covered with lightning. And as I speak, they will strike their mark. I strike that affliction that pain, that disorder, that disease with the light of Christ. As I speak, my decrees are being established because the light is shining upon my ways. And that lightning strike is destroying that disorder, driving out the darkness that comes with it. In the name of Jesus, Fry, fry it, fry it, fry it. Shabu, Shabu. And just so you know, Psalm 111 one talks about praising the Lord. The word praise there is hala in the Hebrew. And guess what it means? To flash forth light. So your voice meant to shine forth, to be bright, to be resplendent. But to praise means to flash forth light. It's like an increase going from, you know, sparkly, glimmery light to shining light to lightning bolt. That's why it's so good to praise. Psalm 111, verse 1. That's why it's good to praise. Remember this moment, the next time you're in the middle of something super hard. Because the temptation is to say something out of the darkness in your soul. Like, I hate that. Oh, my God. I'm going to kill that person. If they say one more word, you have to go, God, Jesus, thank you. I praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Praise you! Praise you! Ah, ah, praise you! Ah, ah. You know why? Because darkness doesn't heal stuff. Darkness won't change that person. Darkness won't fix that problem. But light will. Praise your way through it. Flash forth lightning. Think of the most troubling, disturbing thing you're dealing with right now. 
Now start praising God. Go. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Thank you, God. We love you, Jesus. Oh, God, we praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we lift you up. Oh, you are awesome. Magnify you. Magnify you. Magnify you, Lord. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I love you. Praise you. I give you the excellent. I don't hear you guys. Get busy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Worship you. Give me the honor. Give me the glory. We, I thank you, Jesus. You're wiping out that problem because we're praising you through it. 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 We're giving you the honor. We're giving you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, worship you, worship you, worship you, worship you. Thank you, exalt you, exalt you, exalt you, exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise you. We lift you up. Magnify you. Magnify you. Awesome God. Awesome God. Beautiful God. Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. The Christ, the crucified God, salvation, redemption, I praise you, almighty God, King of kings, God of glory, love you, Jesus, love you, Jesus. Remember this moment. I have to remind myself every day. Praise our way through it and release light. Amen? Amen. Malachi 4.2, Hunter. Look, the light of Christ. It heals you. Soul, body, every part. But under you who revere and worshipfully fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings and his beams. And you shall go forth and gamble like calves, released from the stall, and leap for joy. You know why the Amplified adds on the beams, meaning beams of light? Because the word arise there. It's the Hebrew word zarek, and it means this, to irradiate or shoot forth beams. That's why the Amplified added on that we're healed in the wings and the beams. Look, I want you to understand something. Jesus heals using light. It says the Son of Righteousness arises on you with healing. Healing. The word healing there means tranquility of mind, which means the light heals your soul, takes out the torment and the strongholds in your mind and, every, and all the other parts of your soul, helps you to have healed, balanced emotions to become whole inside your inner man. But the word healing also means a cure, to take like a medicine, meaning it also cures the diseases and disorders in your body. It heals you soul and body. Amen? Soul and body. Look, everybody here knows that when the glory shows up, people get healed, right? Right? Okay. Try go and read Matthew 17 one time when Jesus goes up on the mountain of transfiguration. Okay? When he's up there, it says all of a sudden his face became brighter than the sun and his clothing became as bright as light. He got hit. He got hit by impartation of the presence of the Father God who is light and there's no darkness in him. And then right after that it says, and his, his clothes shone brighter than light and a cloud, there's the glory, right? And then it has brackets in the Amplified Classic it says, and then a cloud composed of light overshadowed him. Do you understand something? If, if we have that, there it is, see? While he was still speaking, behold, a shining cloud, that's the glory, composed of light, overshadowed him. How many of you know that the glory is filled with light? This is one of the reasons why people get healed in the glory. 
the glory is composed of light because the glory is God's presence and God is light and there is no darkness in him and Jesus is the light of the world. He's a son of righteousness who arises on people when they're in the glory with healing in his wings and his beams of light. The glory is composed of light. Light is one of the reasons why people get healed in the glory. Because darkness, the darkness of sin, the darkness of sickness, the darkness of disorders, the darkness of inner, inner problems in your inner man are, are wiped out in his light. And it happens in an accelerated manner when the glory is present. Did you hear what I said? Put your hand on wherever you need it. Say, oh God, we worship you. Cover us with your glory cloud. Composed of light. So the sun of righteousness can arise on us with healing in his wings and his beams of light. Say, Lord God, I believe Jesus is healing me, causing me to be tranquil of mind. Say, my mind, my will, my emotions are being flooded with light, so I'm being healed. I'm peaceful. I'm joyful. I'm calm. I'm gentle, I'm tranquil, I'm not depressed, I'm not anxious, I'm not fearful, I'm not bitter, I'm not annoyed, I'm not resentful, I'm not impatient, I am filled with light. And Jesus, the son of righteousness, is making my soul righteous by arising on me with healing in his wings and his beams of light. As Jesus arises on me, I'm being cured. Because the word healing means to be cured. Say this disease, this pain, this disorder, this problem in my body, is being cured. It's being cured by the light of Jesus Christ. I decree it, and it's being established. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, there was this little boy in Holland. He was born extremely autistic. His parents contacted us years ago and told us the situation. This child had not made a single sound, not even a moan or a groan, and he was three years old. He would not look his parents in the eye. He would not let anyone touch him. He would stand in front of doors and drawers and open and shut them all day long. Very typical behavior of an extremely autistic child. The parents were desperate. She asked the Lord one night, what do I do? He said, I want you to wake up tomorrow morning at exactly 4 a.m. and call this, this ministry number that you see on the TV right now. She scribbled down the number. She waited. She set her clock for 4 a.m. She woke up. She called them. The lady answered and said, wow, I was just about to step out. She goes, we usually don't stay open this late. She goes, I've been on the prayer line. As I was walking out, the, call, the, the phone rang. I answered. She goes, I have this problem with my son. And the lady said, well, I'm not supposed to say anything like this, but you need to contact Katie Sousa's ministry. And she gave her the number. She called. We gave her the tools. This was one of them. She began to give the light, decree it over her son like a medicine. 
Remember it says the son of righteousness arises with healing in his wings and his beams of light. The word healing there means a cure to take like a medicine. Meaning you got to do this regularly. So you'll always stay on top of the darkness. And it will always have to bow and leave. And she gave it to her son like a medicine. Decreeing it over him. Every day. Over and over again. Nothing happened for six months. And then one day, the therapist came over. And during the session, that little boy opened his mouth and let out a cry. From that moment, it accelerated. Next, he went to his grandmother, took her face in his hands, looked her right in the eyes, and kissed her on the lips. He began to talk. He stopped doing the repetitive actions. And now that little boy speaks three languages, goes to school, rides horses, and it's completely normal. He took it like a medicine. Hunter, put up John 12. I want to show you something. This is Jesus talking. Today you start this, and then you keep taking the light of Christ like a medicine. Here's the proof. Ready? Here's Jesus talking. He says, while you have the light, believe in the light. Have faith in it. Hold on to it. Rely on it. That you may become sons of the light and be filled with the light. Now, here's Jesus. He's talking about himself in the third person. It's kind of weird. Instead of saying, while you have me, believe in me. Have faith in me. Hold on to me. Rely on me. He's calling himself the light, capital L. He's talking about himself. But he's referring to himself as the light. Why? Because he's saying, I want you to hold on to, to rely on, to have faith in, and to believe in this characteristic of who I am. I am the light of the world. I am a light being. I live in you. And I want you to believe in the light. I want you to believe that everything the Bible says about the light of Christ can do what it says it can do. I want you to have faith in it that it will actually work, that this is real. I want you to hold on to it, meaning you don't just drop it off the side when you walk out of here and you say, that was a great session, yay. No, you keep doing it. You hold on to it. You take it like a medicine. And you rely on it. When you have a problem, you run to this. You say, that darkness is going to go because I have the light of the world living in me. This is Jesus talking, not me. Amen? Thank you, Lord. 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 Remember last night how we talked about death? You know, you take death to court because he's accusing you of breaking the law so he's able to produce fruit in your bodily organs, fruit for death. So once you rebuke him, you cast him out, then you need to rebuild. You need to rebuild every area where death started to decay you and corrupt you and destroy you and disease you. It's like binding and loosing, binding and loosing. You bind death, you loose light. Do you understand? Let me prove it to you. Too. Psalm. One oh seven fourteen hunter. His light broke through the darkness, and he led us out in freedom from death's dark shadow and snapped every one of our chains. Put your hand on wherever you need it. And say, Lord, I've faced the accusations of death, and I won because you, Jesus, annulled death. You brought its power to naught and to no effect. And that spirit has been cast out. 
I bound death and now I lose light. I lose your light to lead me out of the freedom of death's dark shadow that he put on my physical body. And I decree the light will snap every one of the chains I'm dealing with now. In Jesus' name. Start, lay hands on your neighbor. Command those chains to snap because of the light. Come on, snap those chains. Snap them. Whatever is chaining you, snap it. Snap that chain with the light. I see the wives going to their husbands, snap, snap, snap. Remember how I told you that words of knowledge work that way? That the light hits you, poof, it illuminates you so you get that word of knowledge. And then you open your mouth and speak it. And the gateway of your mouth lets the light being out of your spirit to that person, flies to that person, heals them. Ephesians 1, 17 through 18, please. Hunter. <laughs> Snap it. <laughs> Next time you, 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 you tell somebody when they have an attitude and you tell somebody, oh, snap, it's going to mean a whole new thing. <laughs> I mean, come out of that darkness, fool. Into the light. Okay. For I always pray to God, to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insights into mysteries and secrets in the deep, intimate knowledge of him. Stay right there, Hunter. Don't move it. Do you hear that? How many of you want the spirit of wisdom and revelation? That's where words of knowledge come from, right? How many of you want insights to mysteries and secrets how many of you want a deep intimate knowledge of god next line tells you how to get it you get it by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light that's why he said by having the eyes of your heart meaning you get it by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light that's how you get it. That's how you get the wisdom and the revelation and the secrets and the mysteries and the intimacy. Because light carries information. And when the eyes of your heart are flooded with light, what does that mean? The word heart there, you know what it means? The soul. The soul. You see, your spirit already knows the secrets and the mysteries. Your spirit already know, has a deep, intimate knowledge of God. Your spirit already has a spirit of revelation and a spirit of wisdom. It's your soul that gets in the way. Your soul's a really bad filter. It blocks you. It blocks you from getting the secrets and the mysteries. But when the eyes of your heart, i.e. your soul, the eyes of the windows to the soul are flooded with light, then you'll know the hope to which he's called you to. 
Put your hand on your heart. And put your hand in front of your eyes and keep your eyes open and look at your eye, look at your palm of your hands. Remember, your hands are covered with lightning and they strike their mark. <laughs> Say, Lord, I send the light of Christ into my heart. Keep your eyes open, please, and look at your palm. I see a lot of you doing this with your eyes closed, looking at your palm. What are you looking at? The back of your eyelids? Okay. Say, I send the light that my hand is covered with into my eyes to flood the eyes of my heart with light. And I decree that anything in my soul in my seer vision, in my mind, in my emotions, that is blocking me from receiving the secrets and mysteries and the intimate knowledge of God and the spirit of wisdom and revelation is now filled with light. The light of Christ is driving out the darkness in my soul that's blocking me from getting the stuff. I want it all, God. Fill me with light. Flood me with light. Irradiate me with light. Blast me with light. Blast me with light. Blast that darkness out. Blast it in Jesus' name. Now, Put your hand in front of your neighbor's eyes. Have them stare into your hand and command them, be filled with light. Be flooded with light. Irradiate dazzling brightness in the name of Jesus. Come on, keep going. Flood them with light. Irradiate them with light. Shine that light, decree it, and it will be established. <laughs> Say, I get the words of knowledge now. I get those secrets now. I get those mysteries now. I just want to make a little point here about something. You see this, how it says that? Okay, by, you get all that stuff by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so you can know and understand the hope to which he's called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. Now, Hunter, go to verse 19. I just have to add this in because this is important. I'm working on this myself. Do we have it, Hunter, first night? We don't? All right. I'll read it. Hold on. Ay ha! <laughs> oh, you better behave, you little thing. Go! Yes! After it says that, that you can know and understand the hope to which he's called you, and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints. Verse 19 in the Amplified Classic says this, and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power in and for you who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Look, the light gives you the secrets and mysteries, the intimate knowledge of God, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, but it's there so you can what? Know the power. 
so that you can actually have a revelation and understand what you're walking around with. It's immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing power that is, quote, in, in Christ, the hope of glory, Jesus, the light of the world, the light being, in and for us who believe, as exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him in heavenly realms. Look, you've got no, I got, look, I'm being real. I got no idea what I'm carrying around. It's immeasurable. It's unlimited. It's surpassing. It's in and for, it's in and for us. It lives in us and it's for us, for our use, for our application, for our healing, for our breakthrough, for our deliverance, for our increase. If we actually knew what we had in and for us, the unlimited surpassing, we would never have any problems, nothing. So how do we get to know it? You receive the secrets and the mysteries and the spirit of wisdom and revelation by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. It's your soul that's in the way of you knowing what you've got. Say, Lord, I want to know what I got. I want to know that immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing power that is in and for me. I want to know that same power that God exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him in heavenly realms. So fill me with light. Flood the eyes of my heart with light. Flood my eyes. Flood my eyes. Flood my eyes. Flood my eyes. Flood my soul. Flood me, God. Let me see it. Let me know it. Let me experience it. Let me understand it. Let me be able to apply it. Let me believe in it. Let me have faith in it. I flood the eyes of my heart with light. Do it, do it, come on, do it, do it, do it, come on, command light, command light, command light, come on. Do it, do it, do it. Thank you. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, Let me, let me, let me just, let me just fortify something here. Remember, God covers his hands with lightning and they strike, the, and he commands and it strikes its mark. You're creating God's image. Whether you see it right now or not, there's light coming out of your hands, light coming out of your mouth. Look, look. I had I did a school called I did a school called Idols Riot in 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 uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, and at the end everybody came out to get their graduation certificates. Here comes this pastor, African American woman. She's doing this to get up to the stage. She's got really thick goggle glasses on, eyes covered with a film, a, 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 like a like a cataract film. Eyes itself are gray, it's supposed to be brown. She comes up, she gets her certificate. I lean over and I say, Pastor, I'm gonna come pray for you when I'm done. She goes, okay. And she goes back to her seat. So everybody leaves and I go over there and she's sitting there. I go, here I am. And I just put my one hand on her back one hand in front of her eyes. I said, open your eyes, look into my hand. Do not close your eyes. Open your eyes 
and look into my hand. And then I began to decree light scripture. I said, now repeat these after me. Because my voice was releasing light. My hands were releasing light. And her voice was releasing light. So she decreed them after me. And then I said, okay, now, keep your eyes open. And I'm just going to pound it away. And I was just like, in the name of Jesus, the son of righteousness is arising on you with healing in his wings and his beams. You have a fountain of life inside you. His light is life. His light is life. And I just decreed it, decreed it. And there was a guy sitting across the aisle hallway with his arms crossed, leaning back, staring at me like this. <laughs> Skeptic. So I'm pounding away at it. She's like this. She blinks, opens her eyes, and they're clear and brown. I've seen a lot of miracles. I've never seen that before. The guy across the hall goes, I saw that! Her eyes! They turn brown! They turn, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. It's real, it's real. He follows me to another meeting. I don't know, he's there. I'm telling this story. All of a sudden, some guy, it was him, in the very back, jumps up and he goes, that was me, I'm the skeptic. <laughs> he came up and told the story. <laughs> it's real. And the more you do it, the more it will work, because your faith will build. How many people have eye problems in here? Okay. We're gonna get, pray for eye problems, and how many people have ear problems? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you two scriptures, and then we're gonna activate, you ready? Eye problems. Did you know that Jesus healed the man born blind with light? Do you remember that story? They're walking along. Peter says, Lord, who sinned that this man was born blind, him or his parents? And he said, neither. But for the glory of God, was this thing happened, right? So then goes up to the guy, and he says this. As long as I'm in the world, I am the world's light. And when he said this, he spat on the ground, made clay, mud with his saliva, and he spread it as ointment on the man's eyes. Then he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went, he washed, and he came back seeing. Now, every single word is in the Bible in the, in the right place for a reason. Jesus didn't haphazardly just say, while I'm in the world, I'm the world's light. Well, he's going to heal a blind man. He said that. Because he is the light of the world, and he was about to use his light to heal that man's eyes. See, he spits in the clay. What's in spit? Your DNA, right? I mean, I know that. They took my DNA from the police. <laughs> Something filed with the FBI. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, it's true. But did you know, and you can look this up for yourselves, that light particles cling to our DNA? Light particles cling to our DNA. That's what keeps your DNA healthy. So when he spit in that clay, he was making a light bandage. And he spread it as ointment on those man's eyes. And then why did he send him to the pool of Siloam? Because sometimes it takes a little bit for the light to sink in. I prayed for somebody last night, and their eyes didn't get healed but they're gonna happen today. Because sometimes it takes a little while for it to sink in. Light can heal your eyes, your physical eyes. Can heal your ears too. Remember when Jesus, we talked about it, he was up on the Mount of Transfiguration. It says that his face became shining brighter than the sun, his clothing became as white as light, and a shining cloud, quote, composed of light, overshadowed him. Well, what was happening at the foot of that mountain? The little boy who was deaf, dumb, and epileptic or moonstruck, right? Nobody could heal him. They're all trying. Jesus comes down. 
And he ends up driving out that deaf and dumb spirit and healing that little boy. How did he do it? Everybody goes, well, because he's Jesus. Remember, Jesus set aside, temporarily set aside his divinity. He came as fully man. So he could show us that we can do this as men. Amen? So let's look and see in Mark. Let's look at Mark 9. What happened when Jesus came down on the mountain? It says this, immediately all the crowd, when they saw Jesus returning from the holy mount, his face in person yet glistening, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. The Bible mentions stuff not just haphazardly, for a reason. Why does it mention that Jesus was still glistening, his face in person was still glistening with light because he was about to use that light to heal that little boy? Don't believe me? Let's play some videos real quick. And now we're, we're going to activate. Hunter, what do you, do you got the, do you got the opening doors and shutting doors and you got the raw meat eye thing, selfie video deal? Yeah? Roll it. My name is Robin Altland. Uh, we're here in Roswell, Georgia. I've been at Life Center uh, Ministries here for over 30 years. And uh, while Katie was ministering this morning, she began to feel, ministering on the light, she began to feel like there needed to be um, healing in people's eyes. And I immediately jumped up because for over five years, I have had a problem with the uh, moisture in my eyes gradually beginning to decrease. And I've gotten to the point where at night when I would try to wake up, I would literally have to put drops in my eyes because they would be so dry that I, I couldn't see. I literally couldn't see. I couldn't open my eyes. Um, and it was getting progressively worse. And of course the doctor said, you know, well, here's a, a great pharmaceutical something and I just didn't feel like that was really what we needed to do so when she began to talk about eyes this morning that's the first thing that the Lord quickened to my spirit was I want to heal that that condition and one of the ways that it would manifest is during the day if I went to rub my eyelids um, underneath the the back side of my eyelids were so raw and so dry that it felt like raw meat and if I would touch my eyelids, it would feel like needles stabbing in because my eye was so dry that it would be just like sand scraping across it. So when we began to pray and she began to speak the light and the life and I was uh, the person standing in front of me was holding up her hands and that light was coming in, she said to me, she said, I saw your eyes just kind of pop for a minute. And, and I really felt like, okay, Lord, this is, I, I, I believe I've received this. So the first thing I did was reach up and began to try to rub my eyes to see. And there was absolutely no pain, no sensation of dryness at all. And so I've been doing like this uh, for a while just to see. It's like, come on, there's got to be some place that's still dry. There was nothing. All the pain is gone. Uh, my eyes have a normal moisture to them now. And it, I mean, I'm just like, this is amazing how God, God spoke the healing, I received it, and I now have a testimony that I intend to take back to my doctor. <laughs> and look, I've gotten so, I mean, cataracts, blind eyes, I just don't have all of them on footage, so I played you the footage we have, but that's pretty, right? Okay, I mean, I was just at Robert Henderson's, we had three cataracts disappear. Okay, this is real. Okay, and uh, now let's play the ear. Let's play a near one. Tell me your name. Paul. What happened with the ears, Paul? Um, I've always, every time I breathe in, it sounds like a door slamming. So you actually hear a, like. I hear a, a plugging. Like, so every time you breathe in, it goes. Every time I breathe in. It, it sounds like shut, open, shut, open. Yeah. Wow, how long have you had that? Um, most of my life that I remember. Can you imagine living with that your whole life? Wow. Okay, so what happened today? It's not there anymore. <laughs> okay, so now, face the audience. Now, explain the process. So you would take a breath. And it would slam shut. And I, they'd be mumbled. I would it'd sound like I'm in a bucket of water. Okay, and then when you would exhale... It would open back up. There'd be crackling noise, uh, static sometimes, ringing. And I'd have to clear. I'd have to refocus on 
trying to listen to somebody. So it wasn't just like it would open when you exhaled. No. When it opened, it was like crackle, crackle, snap, static. Yeah. Okay, is that only in one ear, Paul? Well, it was both ears. Both ears. So you would breathe in, the door was shut, it would sound muffly, you'd exhale, it would open, but it would be static and crackling and all that. Yeah. Now, I want you to stand here and breathe in and out for me right now. Go. Okay, now what happened when you did that? It's, it's, it's not there. Can we give God a big praise? Come on. to focus I don't have to I don't have to pick and choose what I listen to I before hear the whole thing before you used to have to just zone in zone in on something if I wanted to listen to something and then too many things it's your brain must be exhausted from doing that <laughs> <coughs> men of God up here now quickly uh, we're gonna impart to him father we thank you as the men of God come up here we're imparting to Paul a repairing of his brain yes. And for him not to be exhausted in his mind, he has had the exhausting task of having to refocus in order to hear any conversation. So we speak dunamis power into his soul right now so he can be completely filled with the glory light of Jesus and he can become excellent a soul. We send light into his mind to make him marpe, sound of mind. The sun of righteousness is arising on him with healing in his wings and his beams of light right now in Jesus name right now and we thank you God for this miracle and now refresh his mind his emotions every part of his soul in your light in Jesus name right now now let's give God a big praise yeah. Yeah. Paul is you know you're a big man and but you yet you okay, have go tears ahead and bring it down flooding your cuz we got we got to move on time we're at 523 all right this is what we're going to do Everybody that needs an eye miracle, I want you to come from this side of the stage over and line up along the stage looking outward. If you need an eye miracle, line up and look outward. Outward, okay? Go down this way, try to fill it in. Oh, there's a lot of peeps. Lord God. Whoa, everybody's standing up. We're gonna run out of people to pray. Well, we're gonna have to do the eyes first, I guess. All right, eyes, everybody with eyes. Okay, now, you might have to be praying for each other. And Hunter, Hunter, I need something just white, a white screen up there for them to look at. All right, now, yeah, curl around the edge. Lord, God, thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right, now, leftover people, arise, please. Go find a person. Please keep up your hand until a person comes to pray for you, please. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. When somebody comes to pray for you, put your hand down. Okay, I need everybody involved. This is a big job. Come on down, please. Keep your hand up until someone comes to pray for you, then put your hand down. <clears throat> okay. Wow. All right, now. All right, now, this is what I want to do. And don't worry, this isn't a problem. If you still have your hand up, pair up with somebody next to you that has their hand up. Come on. All right, pair up with somebody else. Don't worry, you're thinking, they've got the same thing I do. You both have light in you, okay? Pair up. Listen to me over here. Hey, watch me. Watch me. Look at me over here. Pair up. If you have your hands up, pair up with somebody else that has their hand up because you still all have the same light in you. Okay, go find people to pray. Now, does everybody have somebody to pray for them? If you don't, wave. All right, look, who's waving? Go find somebody, girlfriend, that's waving. Go on, find somebody. There's another waver. All right, all right, look, listen to me. Shh, everybody, shh, shh, everybody, I, hey, 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 hey. Hey, I got the mic. Everybody listen to me. I'm in charge. 
Okay, look. All right. You're going to put your hand in front of their eyes. Make sure they do not close their eyes. All right? Put your other hand on their shoulder. Okay? All right. Are you ready? You guys are going to repeat after me. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, say, Lord God, in Jesus' name, the light being, Jesus Christ, is outraying from my inner man, through my voice, through my hands, into the eyes of this person who needs a healing, who needs a miracle. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I say that as I decree these things, as I decree healing, it will be established because the light of Christ will shine upon my ways. I thank you, Lord God, that my hands are covered with lightning, and as I speak, they will strike their mark. All right, here's the problem. See this problem right here? Glasses on while you're praying for the eyes. Please take off the glasses. Thank you. Lord God. <laughs> I love you people. All right? Okay, now come on, let's keep praying. Say, Lord God, in me is a fountain of life in his light. I see light. Oh, in his light. I see light. It's the fountain of life that's bubbling up to, to heal me. Listen, people who are getting prayed for, I want you to make these decrees too. You're going to double tap yourself. Double tap, double tap. It's a wrestling match. Hello? All right? I want to see everybody's mouths moving. Everybody. Okay, ready? I release the fountain of life that's in me so that I'm filled with light and I see light. In Jesus' name, I decree Luke 11, my eye, my conscience, my soul, my physical eye is sound and fulfilling its office because my whole body is full of light. The light is invading my entire body, including my soul and my eyes, so I have no darkness in me whatsoever. I am the lamp with its bright rays that give out light. I decree my lamp is shining, shining, shining into the soul of this person and into their eyes to give them a miracle in the name of Jesus now. I thank you, Lord, that the fruit, the effect, and the product of the light or the spirit is trueness of life. This person will have trueness of life by having their eyes completely healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that the light being is rising on them. He's the son of righteousness, and he's arising with healing in his wings and his beams of light. Light. Light is healing them. Light beams are flowing into their soul to cause them to be what healing means. Tranquility of mind and a cure. Their soul is becoming tranquil. Their mind is being healed. They're being healed of all trauma, all trauma, and they're being cured of floaters, cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, dry eye, itchy eye, infected eye, blurry eyesight, loss of vision, and all other eye problems. In Jesus' name, Jesus, your light brings life. Whoever believes in you will not walk 
in the darkness, but will have the light which is life. I receive life and I release life into the soul, into the eyes of the person that I'm praying for. I thank you, Lord, that your light is irradiating them, shining in them, flooding them. Their eyes of their heart are being flooded with light so they can know the secrets and the mysteries of God. I thank you, Lord. Your revelation light is exposing everything in them that would stop their miracle. In Jesus' name, are, is this a woman who's believing for her eyes to be healed? Open your eyes. <laughs> okay, now keep praying the light. Come on, keep on doing it. Come on, release light. Make sure you keep your eyes open. Make sure you keep beaming light into their eyeballs. All right, now I want everybody to turn around while that person's praying for you, and I want you to stare at one of these white screens until the floaters disappear, the cataract dissolves. Now I want you to say one more prayer with me. Ready? Say, Lord God, I step into court, and I face every deaf, dumb, and blind spirit, every serpentine spirit, every witchcraft spirit that's cursing my eyes and my ears, I repent for anything I have in common with them in Jesus' name, and I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to put a grace bubble over me. For where sin increases and abounds, grace superabounds. I decree that I'm under grace and I'm under the blood, so every deaf and dumb spirit, every blind spirit, every serpentine spirit has to go. And the curses cannot land because Christ became a curse for me. All right, now put out your hands. Nobody pray. My turn. Ready? Father, in Jesus' name, I speak. Close your eyes now to every deaf and dumb spirit, every blind spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And I say you've been judged by the court of heaven. These people are under the blood which has made them righteous. They've been decreed the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ became righteousness for them and imputed his righteousness to them. They stand firmly in this grace. They cannot be, be attacked or assaulted in any way. So I speak to these spirits and I put a judgment on you. So every deaf and dumb spirit, every blind spirit, you come out. 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 I loose them, 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 I loose them. I speak creative power. Command the ear to open, the eye to open. I speak creative power into the ear and the eye right now. And I command every floater, every cataract, every everything in the ear to 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 dissolve, to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Now. Keep praying for them while you look at the screen until the floaters, cataracts, dry, whatever it is, disappears. Go. And guess what? I'm running to the potty. I drank a gallon of water. I'll be right back. <laughs> Come on, do it. Do it. Let me hear you praying. Let me hear you praying.
All right, when you get healed, tell me. Let me know when the floaters are gone, the cataract is gone. Who is it, right there? Who's healed? Wave at me. Come up here if you're healed. Keep on looking, keep on decreeing. Right now in Jesus' name. Son of righteousness is right. Remember, the man had to go to the pool of Salome. It took a minute, sold people, sold people in the light. You're not staring at the white screen. You're not staring at the white screen. What happened? Come here. What did you have? Um, I had floaters. I had astigmatism in my left eye really bad. What does astigmatism look like? Astigmatism looks like um, it's like a bending in your eye, so you have to get like special lenses to see clearly okay. and um, to read. I have multifocals for driving, for computers. How could you tell if your astigmatism is healed? Um, I actually can see clear across the room, very clearly. Every very clearly. Glasses anymore. Don't need glasses. This is great. And how are those floaters? Where are they? Uh, totally gone. I don't see them anymore. No floaters. How many did you have? I had like three or four in my left eye. How long were they there? Um, throughout the year, I've had them. Let's give God a praise. <laughs> Who else? Come on, keep looking at the screen. It's going to start now. Who else? Got, did you get healed? Come up here. Come on. Come on. And people with deaf ears should check their ears. Come on. You know what? You think floaters are no big deal, but it's a tear in your retina. All right, go ahead. What, what's your name? Uh, Sam. Oh, sorry, Sam. <laughs> Bing. Oh, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh. Okay, what did you have, Sam? I also have astigmatism, but I was born with, instead of my eyes being cross-eyed, I have one that goes outwards. And so if anyone holds, reading books or anything, this eye has to constantly work really hard. Do you feel yourself working that eye? You, you feel it? Like reading is exhausting, you know, for long periods of time because this, this eye has learned how to cope and come back in, but it's constantly doing this. And now I just, I could look at my friend's hand. And so anything up really close would just cause anxiety. But there's no anxiety in all the bubbles and everything looking at the white screen have gone. So it's like, it's, so my, I don't know what the opposite of cross side is. I don't even know what you call that. But basically this eye has obviously come back straight. So one eye was always, for, for your entire life, you were born like that. And, and it would exhaust you to read because it would try to fight to center. And you said bubbles. What did you mean by bubbles? When I looked at the white screen, I could see these black dots. Yeah. And, and as I just said, keep praying, keep praying. They're fading, they're fading, they're fading. And so now I can look and there's no black dots. They're gone. They're gone. Can we give God a big praise? So good. Who else? Come on. Who else is getting healed? Come on. Come up here. Whoever's healed. If you're all the way healed, come up. Are you all the way healed? Get back down there. Go back. Go back. Keep praying for her. Don't try to sneak up here so I'm going to pray for you. You know why? Because everybody has the light being inside of them, not just me. What? You can read that? And are you saying you couldn't before? You could not read that. 
right? Because why? Are you a short, uh, what? I couldn't see far really good, and I couldn't see up close, at, yeah, at all. It was blurry. And now you got it. You can read that. You want me to read it? Go ahead. All righty. Okay, it says, uh, oh. <laughs> you are reading upside down. You're reading upside down. Can you see, can you, can you translate or are you dyslexic of loco chica loco? No, okay. Are you healed or not? I am, 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 I am. That's all, that's the new song. Okay, you can see it, right? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> you see tension? That, oh, you're reading that tiny, tiny little thing. Attention. Attention. It says action. You're close. I couldn't even read that, so I'm not going to fault you for that. All right, who else has gotten healed? Come on, keep praying. If you're not healed yet, you need to keep praying. Look, you, you said it's not working. He sent him to the pool of Siloam to wash. Keep soaking people in light. Flip them around and shine more light in their eyes. Go, go, go. Who else is healed? Come up here. If you are healed, come up here. Where's the guy with the bungee cord? Where's the bungee cord dude? Make sure you keep your eyes open. If you got healed, let me know. Take your glasses off. Say, Lord God, in Jesus' name, I decree again, the Son of Righteousness is arising with healing in his wings and his beams of light. I'm being healed in my soul and my body. I am pressing through for the breakthrough and nothing can stop the light being Jesus Christ, the light of the world from healing my eyes. I receive it now in Jesus' name. The eyes of my heart are flooded with light. His light brings life. In me is the fountain of life. In his light, I see light. I see light flooding my eyes in the name of Jesus, and I am healed by Jesus. And I decree that any spirit blocking my victory is being judged and removed now. In the name of Jesus, right now, right now. What about ears? Who's got the ears? Wave at me for ears. Did you test? How many people tested their ears? Did you test? Test your ears. Test your ears. Test your ears. Keep looking at the screen. Keep decreeing light. Come on. There should be more healing. We're not going to stop until we see more healing. Unless we get kicked out, of course. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, light of Christ, light of Christ, light of Christ, right now, light of Christ, light of Christ, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, light of Christ, right now, right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, right now, right now, right now, light of Christ, who has cataracts? All cataract people up on the stage. Okay, did my ear people check? Where's my ear people? Where's my ear people? Where's my ear people? Did you check? What do you got? I can hear uh, a clearer. I was just having trouble uh, hearing people, and now it doesn't sound like a rumble anymore. It sounds normal. So it sounds normal now? It sounds normal now, and it didn't sound normal before. So your ear got healed? Yes. Let's give God a praise for that. Where, where else is my ear people? Ear people. Come up here. Ear people on stage. 
Kedrick, 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 Kedrick. Okay, come on. So in Jesus' name. Okay, wait. I want to add something to everybody. Ready? I just, the Lord told me something. Ready? Say, Lord God, the Bible says idols cannot see and they cannot hear. So I repent for any idolatry in my bloodline that's caused me to be blind or deaf. Lord God, I put myself under grace, under grace, under grace. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I ask you, show me all my idols, and you destroy them in my heart and in my life, in Jesus' name. And I judge every idolatrous spirit that's causing this blindness, eye problems, or problems with my ear. In the name of Jesus, heal my soul of all idolatry and heal my soul of all trauma that led me to idolatry in Jesus name now stay right there father I command those idolatrous spirits you come out you come out out of the ears out of the eyes in the name of Jesus now 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 in the name of Jesus now 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 in the name of Jesus now how many of you have idols Really ask God right now to start putting you under grace right now, and then you're going to get free. Go.